Hello friends. <coughs> so now we have come, this is our uh, seventh lecture on the rat trap. And now as we are following the method, communicative method, first we will explain the words and phrases. And of course use them in sentences to illustrate the meaning. <coughs> bother with me, bother with me means to worry about me. When, when children grow up, you know, when they are adults, if the parents show anxiety and uh, overcare, they will tell their parents, uh, Daddy, uh, please don't bother me. So, please don't bother me. That's because they are independent, so they are normal children, they can manage their affairs themselves. That is, uh, bother me. Evil forebodings. Forebodings means itself means evil warnings. Warnings about something evil. In some cultures, uh, the sound of the the sound produced by lizards considered to be considered to be a sign of evil forebodings. Lizards they make a sound like this. No? <laughs> some people say it is an agreement. To what you say? Some people say it is uh, uh, evil for bodies. Now, third one is had run across unexpectedly. Last week I had run across unexpectedly one of my long lowest friends. That means I met him accidentally by chance. That is. Then uh, well groomed, groom, bright groom. So that means well cared for, well groomed. In, in our younger days, uh, when we were children, we were well groomed. Means we used to be provided with all the things for that we wanted, and okay, and they give encouragement and all those. Things. Well groomed. Then pocket bro, pocket means wrinkled, wrinkled, means frowning like this, to show dislike. Uh, when I was talk, when I talked in the class, the Teacher showed, looked at me with a pocket bro. Means, yes, this is pocket okay, frowning. And dissimulate, dissimulate means to pretend, dissimulate. Uh, it is not good to dissimulate what you are not. What you are not, don't pretend what you are not. And next, the splendor has disappeared. The splendor here means the support or the goodwill. The goodwill just disappeared. Uh, the, when I failed in the exam, my splendor disappeared uh, in my house. That is, uh, in my house, the members thought that uh, I am a first class, first time student. <laughs> but I failed, then all the splendor disappeared. Yes. That is clear, I think. Now the main uh, highlights, the tram agrees to go with Edla, Edla, I think it is clear, really, yes, Edla to the manor house. Second is, the tram is well groomed uh, and looks fresh. When he, he, when he was well groomed at the manor house, he looked fresh, he looks fresh. The iron master plans to resettle the tram. He was thinking that is my regimental captain, my regimental comrade. He should not be allowed to wander here or there like a tram selling black traps. I will make, we'll make some uh, arrangement for him to uh, lead a, a happy or a decent, do some decent job. And then the Iron Master uh, becomes aware of his mistake. Uh, then at the end of this section, he will know that the Iron Master, uh, he, agree, I mean, he comes to know that he has made a big mistake. Mistake in identity, that's it. I think so far it is clear to you, now we begin. She said this in such a friendly manner that the rat trap peddler must have, that the rat trap peddler must have felt con confidence in her. So what did she say? She said, just come, share our Christmas Eve food with us. That's all. You can go wherever you, if you want. Or even without our permission. Or without informing us, you can go. 
when he had this, he felt confidence. He thought that ah, she is she's very sincere and honest. It would never have occurred to me that you would yeah, that you would bother me with, with bother with me yourself, Miss. He said. So he said that oh, why did you why I I never thought that it never have occurred to me. I had never thought that you would be worried about me so much. He said, I will come afterwards. So that is done. That agreement is done. That deal is made. So she said, he says, I am, and my heart is moved. I never thought that you would be so much bothering about me. He accepted the fur coat, which the wagon handed him with a deep bow. So the, they had brought a long fur coat. So the valley handed over to him, then like the Japanese people, you know, they bow like this. A deep bow, with a means that is showing respect. And he took it and threw it over his rags and followed the young lady out to the carriage without granting the astonished blacksmith so much as he glanced. So without granting the asto astonishment surprise, Kondrasta <laughs> Kantandrasta. Then uh, the grinding means giving, giving the astonished blacksmith so much as a glance, not even a casual look. A glance means casual look, no? opposite of gaze. Gaze means looking straight like this. Now this is a casual look, he said. He didn't bother. He, now he has, he has uh, begun. <coughs> so, he has become. Now he has become a, a captain, isn't it? Yes. But while he was riding up to the manor house, he had evil forebodings. So that is uh, warnings. He had, he had bad thoughts came to his mind. Why the devil did I take that fellow's money? Which fellow's? Do you remember that man no, who was supported by his cow? That old man who lavished the hospitality on him, who gave him food who gave him tobacco to smoke, who also shared a card game with him. So why in the devil I took it? He, he started feeling remorse, I think. He thought, now I am sitting in the trap and will never get out. So here it is a trap, you see. In two senses he thought. One is that he has stolen the money. Second is he is now going to the manor house. That is also a trap, he thought. The rat trap. The next, the next day was Christmas Eve, and when the Iron Master came to the dining room for breakfast, he probably thought with satisfaction of his old regimental comrade, when he had run across, whom he had run across so unexpectedly. So next morning he comes to the breakfast for breakfast or dining, and he was thinking, oh, it's great that uh, it's so great that. Uh, I came across this man, I can help him, I can settle him, I can find a job for him, I can uh, make arrangements for his decent living. This club, after the once upon a time, he was my regimental comrade one, together. And you must see that he gets something else to do than to run around the, the country selling uh, traps. So he says like that. We must see that he gets a decent job. It is, uh, he says, it is uh, uh, that, the, it is, uh, sorry, it is a uh, uh, cure, he says. It's, it's very strange, cure means very strange. It's a cure that things have gone downhill. Things have gone downhill in his uh, miserable life. What? Yes, unlucky, it has become unfortunate. It is strange that he has become so unfortunate as badly as that said the daughter. So uh, the, uh, both the father and the daughter, they are now thinking only of the welfare of this man. How to reset him? Last night I did not think there was, there was anything about him to show that he had once been an educated man. So she says that uh, I was thinking and thinking, what is the, what, what, um, evidence is there, or what? Uh, what are the signs? I can't find any sign, any trace in him of an educated person. 
He's, I thought that he is, but now you said that he was, he was a criminal comrade and we must, uh, yes, he is an educated man and we must uh, raise up with him and so on. As soon as he gets clean, you, know, you must have, he said, the father said, you must have patience, my little girl, said the father. You wait a few minutes more, he will appear, he will come as a regimental officer or a captain, then all your misunderstanding simply vanish in the thin air, he said like that. As soon as he gets clean and dressed up, you will see something different. So we can see. So they are talking about the, this man, how to reset them down, what has happened to him, things have gone downhill with him, now he is leading a miserable life. He should not, be, we should not allow him to lead such a miserable life. We must see that he is resettled, gets a, uh, he, he does some decent job and so on. And uh, of course the daughter, she is just uh, expressing her misgiving, thinking, saying that uh, last night I was thinking that uh, there is nothing so wonderful about this man. I can't find even a trace in him of an educated man. Then the father says, comforts her saying, you wait and see what is happening. Wait and see. Let us also <laughs> wait and see. Then uh, as soon as he gets clean and dressed up, you will see something different. Last night he was naturally embarrassed. Father says, last night he was embarrassed. Mm -hmm. he was once we were together and he was my comrade. The tram, uh, the tram marriage will fall away from him with the tram clothes. When he changes over to our clothes, the clothes that we are going to give, the decent clothes, and when he throws away, comes out of the tram clothes, definitely his tram marriage also will change. Just as he said this, the dog opened and the stranger so the father, father said, his tram manners will change along with his tram clothes. And as he said this, the stranger came and stood there. Yes, now he was truly clean and well dressed. The valet had bathed him, cut his, cut his hair and shaved him. Moreover, he was dressed in a good looking suit of clothes which belonged to the iron master. Huh. <laughs> and then he he wore a white shirt and a starched collar and whole shoes, not half shoes. Then what happened? As soon as he said, you can see that the, the arm managed to go with his tram was he and this. Well groomed, had a bath, shaved, cut his hair, and the iron master so on suit. He is wearing. Now, he, there is no possibility of misunderstanding or mistaking him. Moreover, he was just accepted. He wore a white shirt and a starch collar and gold shoes. But although his guest was so well groomed, the Iron Master did not see this. A tearing to him. So he was well groomed, he was well looked after, well dressed, well kept, well given a good haircut and also a very pleasant shaving, maybe with the shaving cream and all those things. But then, and wearing his own, Iron Master's his own suit, uh, white shirt, starch or imagine, he stands in front of him, but he was not pleased. He looked at him. Pucked bro, pucked bro, frowning, wrinkled bro. Is this the man? He thought, is this the man I mistook for my regimental company? He felt like that, pucked bro. He looked at him with pucked bro. And it was easy to understand that when he had seen the strange fellow in the uncertain reflection from the furnace, he might have made a mistake. But now, when he stood there in broad daylight, it was impossible to mistake him for an old acquaintance. So in the uncertain reflection of the furnace, that means almost 70% uh, later, 
It's a reflection of them. When he saw this plant, he misunderstood or does a mistake in identity. Now he thinks that. But now in the broad daylight, there is no scope for any mistake. He said, there was a mistake to consider that he was his own acquaintance. What does this mean? A thunder. He himself took all the pains. He himself sent his daughter and And in, in this case, we must say, who, whom will you support? The iron master or the Tom? The Tom is innocent in this case. Then, what was this? Actually, stranger man made no attempts to disobey. He did not make any attempt to pretend that he was his old acquaintance. He didn't bother. He saw at once the splendor had come. What is the splendor? Splendor is the Iron Master's thinking. The Iron Master's misunderstanding that he was his old acquaintance. He was his regimental comrade. He was a captain. He was an educated man. He was a decent person. His affairs had gone downhill. He is leading a miserable life now. He must be resettled. He sent him, he sent his daughter along with the carriage and a wallet, a, a manservant to bring him. After coming here, he did all the service to him. All those things he did, vanished in the thing. So, but the crown did not make any attempt to pretend that he was his old life So he had that much common sense. So and now he understood his position is in a very, uh, his position is very tragic. And he has been caught by circumstances. So understand. I think now we will turn the questions and we will see. Why did the Trump agree to go with Edla? The Trump agreed to go with Edla because he, she somehow managed to infuse confidence in him. That is, must have, must have felt confidence in him. And that's why that she don't, she won't do any harm. She said, no, she made a promise that uh, just as you came in, you can also go out. That's no problem. We don't want it. All what they did is, you just give us company. Just to see that the Christmas Eve food disappears faster than, than usual. Because we don't have any company. Question 2. In what way was the tram treated at the manor house? The, at the manor house he was treated as a VAP. Very important person. He was given clean shave, he was given haircut, he was given a bath of, let's say, with the legs soap. Or Rexona or any such thing. And then he was given new clothes. Not only new clothes, the suit owned by the master of the house himself. Understand? And they were concerned about his future. What would this man do? So they were planning. In fact, they considered him as a very important person and also for the all the time. Uh, they were thinking that, or the Iron Master was thinking that he was his old regimental comrade, a captain, and his old acquaintance. Okay. What plans did the Iron Master make for the captain? Captain in the Thomas. The plans the Iron Master made for the captain were to resettle him. He should not be allowed to wander here and then selling crap and all those things. He had once upon a time a very, having a very, good position, very honorable position. So some such job he must be given. So that's what the Iron Master thought. How did the Iron Master react? When, when the Iron Master understood that there was a mistake that he has made, then he made a mistake because uh, the Trump he considered as his old acquaintances, acquaintance in the uncertain reflection of the furnace there. When he realized that he has nothing to do with this man. He's a stranger, absolutely a stranger, and a beggar, and a tramp, and a useless person, things like that. He thundered at him. 
looked at him with a puckered brow, a puckered brow, and then thundered, what does this mean? <coughs> you are shivering like this. So we will continue by having a nice thing to do.